Welcome to this section of the MS-720 exam overview. I am Nick Elmuff. I'm a Teams Technical Specialist here at Microsoft, and I'm going to be going over planning, configuring, direct routing for Microsoft Teams. Here's a quick look at the topics that are, are identified out in the exam and the percentage that makes up of the grading and everything. So as you can see, it's 15 to 20 percent of the exam, and so it's a a decent amount so it's definitely worthwhile to spend a lot of time to get a full understanding and grasp of all the different components here of the skills measured. I'll be talking through these at a high level um, and providing some additional links and some helpful resources that hopefully help you prepare um, to take the exam and pass. And the first off is just to understand what direct routing is. Um, all the different components, how the SBC is used to bridge the PSTN and Microsoft Teams, and also what's the SBCs that are supported and certified from a Microsoft perspective. Um, so getting a full understanding of that is definitely key as you start out, um, but definitely review the, the docs articles on there. It's super important to get that foundation. And then as we move on to, you know, the connecting that SBC to Microsoft Teams um, and just understanding what's required um, in that, it, whether it's ports, IP addresses, protocols, FQDNs, there's a lot that goes into play in successfully connecting an SBC via SIP trunk to Microsoft Teams. And as you can see here, there's a screenshot on the left that's, that's defining and connecting uh, an SBC uh, to Microsoft Teams via the Teams admin portal. But also on the right, there's also PowerShell. So that's going to be a common theme throughout um, this session and, and many of the other sessions for the exam is to understand that there is a way to do it, the Teams admin portal, but also a PowerShell option for it. And also there's a number of things that we'll, we'll talk about that's only available via configuration via the PowerShell uh, commandlet. Um, so something to keep in mind um, as you go through and prepare. Um, as we talk briefly about just the SIP trunk connectivity from the SBC to direct routing, and the next component is you know, the different call routing features and functionalities and all the different elements that makes up that you can define and control call routing as you see fit, but also the flexibility that you have at your disposal. So understanding what PS PSTN usages are, voice routes, voice routing policies, and then also how to assign uh, the vo voice routing policy to uh, an actual user. As you can see here on the right hand side, this is more of a complex scenario um, and that's actually taken straight from the docs article at the bottom here of this, uh, this slide. Um, it does a real good job of going through the scenario and reviewing how to set up PSTN usages, how to set up voice routes, um, and you know identifying voice routing policies and assigning users to control traffic. Um, as an example that's shown here is the, the ability to provide um, you know, a redundant connection to two different SBCs for a specific call pattern um, for, for the digits dialed. In this example, it's Redmond. And that is, first, it's going to be a uh, random order sent to SBC1 and SBC2. There's a second priority there um, to another couple SBCs of SBC3 and SBC4, just in case SBC1 or 2 are down or they're fully uh, or they're overloaded or if they can't take any more calls so that they do have a, a, a failover mechanism so that the, the call can be completed appropriately. And then at the bottom there, you can see that the number pattern is for the E161 format for the rest of the U.S. and Canada. So, and then there's a subset of SBCs there defined as well. So you can kind of get a feel of how to use the different components and how they're packaged together and then how it's used to define, you know, what calls are sent where and then defining that to uh, specific users. And then... We kind of go next into validating uh, a direct routing um, deployment. Um, so the first thing is just making sure the SBC is connecting properly. So you can check the health dashboard for direct routing in the Teams admin portal. You'll get a great snapshot of the health of the SBCs that you've um, configured and defined, but also understand SIP options and what you need to see for a, a a successful pairing between the SBC and Teams and vice versa. And the next thing is how to test uh, direct routing, right? Um, so there is a way to uh, do that via PowerShell, and the, there's links here to download and run the uh, SIP tester client to actually uh, send synthetic calls and test calls um, 
instead of just leveraging a test user. So um, some some good validation and testing options there. So kind of understand and get a feel for the tools that you have available, um, as well as what does success look like and, and what does validation look like. And then we're just going to look at some other things outside of just the direct routing, uh, connectivity, calling, and validation. We're going to take a look at ex ex some options to extend um, that relationship there with direct routing. So th this first one is uh, location-based routing. It's, it's a mechanism to prevent and restrict toll bypass. So this comes up a lot in different countries where it's illegal to bypass the telco provider. Um, as such as India is a great example of that. So it's understanding what it is and planning for it. And then also what are the different network elements that are required to be defined in order to you know, identify those sites and, and networks so that when users are at a site, you know, it's gonna take the, the nearest path out um, so that it's, it's not bypassing any, any long distance or anything like that. So um, definitely review all those components all the way to planning, configuring, and then enabling end users. And then the next component of that is media bypass and understanding what that means and what that looks like from a signaling and also a media traffic perspective. So media bypass is meant to keep the traffic between the SBC and the Teams client. As you can see here, it's a requirement for location-based routing. Um, so definitely understand that the call flows as well as the different call flows depending on where that Teams user is located. Um, the Docs articles do a great job of diagramming um, the different, the SIP trafficking um, of that, the SIP signaling, as well as the where the media paths are taking, but also how to configure for media bypass um, in those scenarios. So definitely worthwhile to spend some time and understand signaling, uh, media paths, but also um, media bypass itself and how it can be beneficial, um, how it plays in a location-based routing, and what that looks like from a call flow perspective. Then the next piece of extending a direct routing infrastructure is uh, what we call location media optimization. And it's really meant to keep media call traffic local within uh, a corporate network. Um, it allows for, you know, to use centralized SBCs with downstream SBCs at remote sites as proxies. So um, one example that's that's a screenshot here taken again from the, the Microsoft Docs articles is that you have a, a topology here and, and we take a look at a real quick snapshot of Vietnam site that has a, an SBC, but in this scenario, it doesn't have a public IP address, which is required from the SBC to pair properly with Microsoft Teams direct routing. Um, but Vietnam SBC does have uh, a way to register to the centralized SBC in Singapore, and the Singapore SBC is able to connect to Teams properly. So it does have a path to connect out to Teams, um, but also while being able to keep the traffic local for those Vietnam um, users making a call out um, from that site. So definitely take some time to, to understand what it is, what are the, again, what are the call flows, what does the signaling and media paths look like, as well as how to configure those sites um, and the SBCs in, in that scenario. And then we'll move in over to how to control um, tra number translation at the SBC level. So again, this is all about having full control and full fidelity of defining number translation for inbound and outbound calls. And that's for independent um, from an aspect. Um, take a look at the different PowerShell command lists on how to configure it, um, but again, understanding that you do have full control over, you know, those calls coming in, what they translate to, um, even for inbound and outbound, and how to configure those independently. And then we move on to um, creating a valid uh, emergency address. As you can see here, hopefully this, this snapshot is familiar. Um, as you go in the Teams admin portal and go to your emergency addresses and identifying um, emergency locations, uh, providing civic addresses and, and seeing uh, the use of the, the Microsoft Maps to be able to pull geo coordinates for that location, um, but also understanding that there is a PowerShell module as, there, as well for that um, in order to define um, as well. 
So something uh, pretty important to review and get a good grasp on in um, how to define that, but also how to do it in the Teams admin portal as well as in uh, the PowerShell module. And then again, as we extend that direct routing infrastructure and, and to use it for things other than just basic PSTN telephony calls, we introduced the on-network conferencing for direct routing. And what that is really able to use the direct routing connection to do, uh, to accommodate the call me back feature or the dial out from the Teams meeting. So if a user does a dial back from a, from a meeting, it will, has the potential to be able to leverage that direct routing SIP trunk connectivity to, to route that call through the SBC um, and, and also from that SBC up to uh, the meeting if somebody does a dial in. So that's definitely a, an important scenario and example if there's a, another PBX that's on prem that the SBC can route to in those scenarios and it's all about controlling that traffic and keeping as much media and calling traffic on the corporate network under your control as you can. So understand what it is, the different scenarios as, that are supported, but also the, the steps um, to configure this. As you can see, there's a number of components that are, are brought over and overlap from the, the call configuration and the call routing section earlier with PSTN usages and voice routes, et cetera. So understand how you can define those and how they can assign those to uh, audio conferencing um, dial out uh, for on net uh, conferencing for direct routing and how to uh, assign those to users um, as well. So definitely important to take some time and, and review that thoroughly. We're going to move into deploying and maintaining a survivable branch appliance and knowing what an SBA does, how it fits in, how it compares to an SBC. Um, the SBA is going to provide some survivability if uh, internet outage occurs and Teams is no longer uh, reachable over the internet. It will still provide some, you know, some basic PSTN call connectivity inbound and outbound uh, for those users. So. Um, it's quite unique and in, in, in kind of understanding, you know, why it's it's important for for some scenarios and in what situations, um, you know, that survivability is really important. Um, but also understand that it's though the SBC vendors provide that as base uh, in their firmware or their hardware solution. So just review how to create the SBA, how to create the 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 policy for it, how to assign it to users, but also what's unique is registering as an application um, for the SBA in Azure Active Directory. Uh, also under uh, reviewing that there's the PowerShell commandlet that you can do that as well. And then some additional resources uh, beyond this session um, for Teams direct routing. Um, there's a learning path available to, to spend some more time with and go through, um, as well as there's a Teams Academy um, site that has a number of deep dive session that Brian Nice has recorded. Um, and there's three different videos and sessions that, that goes through direct routing at a, at a very deep level and goes through all the components and how they work together and how to configure them. So um, would definitely recommend sitting through those three videos and getting a full understanding, but also there's a PowerPoint deck that's available that he's provided that go that is accompanying all the video recordings that he does. So if you need some additional um, content to review and just keep for yourself and build your own learning, um, you know, that's, that's there um, at your disposal. So thank you. And that wraps up the direct routing for teams session.